Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. We'll start off with our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center. Good folks up there. Stop by and give them a visit. Had one of my students the other day, she's a senior at Moses. She dropped out of her senior year because she wanted to take cosmetology, want to get on with her life, and I uh, just wanted to, uh, that's what she's always wanted to do. So she just went down there to Haney and uh, started a cosmetology class. So go ahead and uh, if that's the inkling of your kids or grandkids or something, go ahead and encourage them to do that. Not to drop out, but to go ahead and get their career started at Haney Technical Center. Okay, high today be 86. A low tonight, we still in those uh, 60s, 67 tonight, and then uh, water temperature dropped down now to 81 degrees. It's been about a uh, two degree drop in the last couple of weeks. River readings, this is uh, not good here. Apalachicola at a point three. We're gonna talk about this later on in the show, the effect of the no water in Apalachicola. But you see right now, folks, at point three. The Choctahatchee Caribbean, it's gonna be leveling off. It was high for the weekend, and it started, it dropped out Saturday and Sunday, and then it's going ahead, and it's about to finish dropping out now. It's at a 4.7, next couple of days now looks pretty smooth on the Choctahatchee. Now our tides, our tides for the day, now the Choctahatchee River was in, it's beautiful this time of year, those leaves fall, and so is the big river. You get up there and you just ride, just take a boat ride, start watching those leaves, okay? Now let's take a look at our uh, tides. You know, we're in a, in a situation now, we have a high tide at 6.09 in the morning and a low tide at 4.19. We've got a decent, uh, got a 1.2 foot range, and then it's going to, the next couple of days will be good, but then this weekend, we talked about what it's going to look like this weekend. Now, we like to do, uh, on occasion, on, uh, we like to call the Panama City Beach Pier and get a good live report from Kerry out there at the Panama City Beach Pier. This brought to us by Tarpon Dock Seafood. All right, good morning, Kerry. Good morning. Tell us what's going on out there, buddy. Well, they catching a few fish here and there. Kind of steady, but it's you know it's not a lot in any one day. It's not a whole lot of fish. But they've been catching about some about everything. You pop them over here and there, and a few flounder, kings, uh, spanish. They've been netting a few mullets. Um, you know, there's red fish showing up here and there. They've been catching some of them. Uh, there's a lot of sheep that hang around the pounds, but I don't I don't have not seen anybody fishing for them. Uh, but they're starting to show up too. Well, that's about it as far as, as far as fishing goes. It's a uh, hit or miss. You know, you come in the morning, it might be flat calm, and, and uh, you're not doing anything in the morning, but in the afternoon, then the wind will pick up, tide will change, uh, the wind will turn around, and uh, they'll start catching them in the afternoon. Well, that's a good good time to ask this question. Now, has the water started clearing up? I, I know that started clearing up, but what's his uh, stage? Of... No, it's not. I hadn't seen it in a couple of days, but it's not its not real clear. It's not real pretty like it's supposed to be this time of year. You know, kind of dingy and muddy looking, but it's better than it was. Yeah. Well, I heard, I heard you mention on the pompano now. I guess this is, we're just starting to catch a, a little bit of pompano then. Yeah, there's been a few pompano caught here. I heard they was a, a big school sighted down there at the county pier. I don't, I don't know. Just what I heard, but I, we haven't seen any big schools pop those, but we have caught a few. Well, that's a good sign. Uh, what do y'all have on y'all's water temperature out there? It's, we've got 81 okay. today. Okay. So oh. It's been running, you know, dropping off a little bit, about quarter or half a degree a day for a little while. So it is moving down some. Okay. Uh, Carrie, a lot of guys out there live bait fishing, or are they just. Uh, just uh, yeah, there's there's quite a few. Uh, Bobby's been coming with some bull minnows, uh, you know, for flounder, and then them guys on the end, of course, catching the hellwives or whatever they can catch at eggs here, and fishing for the kings and big Spanish out there on the end. Oh, good. Well, that's a pretty good report now for our first uh, week of yeah, all. It's, it's not a bad, bad. You know, the fishing's been pretty good. All right. Uh, it hasn't been fantastic, but it's been good. It's been steady. Been steady. I like that word. Just steady fishing. Yes, uh, all right, Bobby. Thanks a lot. I mean, Carrie, thanks a lot. But come see. Him. All right. Uh, you mentioned Bobby. Uh, Bobby's a really st uh, steady fisherman out there, and he's out there all the time. And 
and uh, we'll get her some picture of him pretty soon, I'm sure. But that's a good sign. Uh, first week of pompano sort of showing up, and I've, I've got some more pompano reports uh, after this break. Let's take this break, and we'll be right back. <sighs> All right, good morning now. Uh, welcome back to this section here. This is, uh, let's start off with a good looking boat for sale. Check out this right here. Got a good email from a viewer. We're looking at, a, this is from uh, Bill Mathis, 2008, a 19 foot Bay Flats boat by Clearwater, model 1900 Bay Star. A 90 horsepower Yamaha, four stroke factor install with 210 hours running time. Looks like a poor man's Hughes. Uh, locking compartments, walk around deck, two live wells, a wash down pump, uh, trim tabs, covered for motor, center console, sea cooler, and all aluminum trailer by Magic Tilt, all in like new condition, asking uh, 13,900. This is Bill Mathis, his number is 535-2081, 535-2081, okay? That's our first picture for today. Now, let's go, uh, well, let's show a couple of pictures. We wanna go, all kind of things happen now. That number again is 535-2081. And I'll mention that again. If, uh, that's a good looking boat right there. Now take a look at this picture here. One of the viewers sent this in. A lot of folks try to go shelling. This out here is St. Andrews State Park. Look at all the shells. A lot of folks try to just go over there and enjoy those shells, picking up shells. And they come in different times of year. And that's some good ones right there. Okay, St. Andrews State Park. You want to go pick up a lot of shells. Now let's get in a duck hunt this past weekend. Check out this big duck hunt, all right? These are uh, ducks, by this Matt Cox and Andy Brimer had a good day shooting ducks up there. Nice looking male and female wood ducks right there. Okay, had the uh, fish on the dock. John Laventhal took a, uh, had a group out. Look at those big AJs, nice looking amberjacks there. Good looking picture there. Now, this is, folks, check this out this past weekend. Floundering in, floundering in the panhandle. Okay, this is uh, Bill Lamanac and er Ernie Cabot went with them, Bill, these are two good looking flounder. Now, he said the only bad thing about uh, gigging all night is the next day you don't feel like doing much. I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. And our last picture we want to go into, let's look at, uh, you know, this is setting up his ground blind. This is Jim Botch setting up his ground blind. We talked about doing this before. Uh, make sure you get it set up and, and, uh, and, and you, so the deer get used to seeing it all, okay? And we got one more picture. Uh, Bill Barlow sent this picture. Bill Barlow had a great day on the water Sunday in East Bay. He's been doing good at East Bay with Buddy Cord. He caught five trout, two slot sized redfish, and all caught in that new Havoc plastic fish like a top water lure and, and live menhaden. There was plenty of bait still in East Bay. Water still stained in the bayous, but showing signs of clearing up in open water. And uh, maybe uh, maybe no rain a couple weeks to help out and all. So that's good email. Thanks for the great work on Panning Outdoors. And thank you, Bill Barlow. And all these folks have seen, what we have here, folks, is sort of like a, a nerve center of everything going on in the panhandle. All these pictures sent to us, getting a report from the pier, getting all these pictures here this past weekend. And it's just, it's just great to get all the feedback to share with you as a panhandle outdoorsman, okay? Now, I, I did want to mention this. We mentioned uh, from the pier fishing, all right, uh, about the pompano being caught. Well, this, this past Saturday, two different guys limited out on pompano at Mexico Beach. It's an excellent uh, time. This is a little bit early for the run, but you know, you heard about that school at the county pier, heard about catch at the city pier, and now I'm telling about Mexico Beach. And I was telling you this is an early bite of the pompano, and this is a great, uh, great time to, to do this. I'm gonna show you real quick. Uh, Jeff, I don't know if we can get a camera on these jigs. I just wanna show you a couple of uh, jigs we can use at different times. Uh, now I, I'm gonna show you four or five pompano jigs in this color right here. This is a good color. Right here, we're talking about pompano fishing, fall pompano fishing, the different ways to do it. Here's the color right here. That's an excellent color there. Okay, you got that color there. We put you another color on here. Different size heads, okay. Quarter ounce, okay. Now some folks like these little sparkly ones. See the, little, see the difference in the sparkles right there? But you notice they all have a trend. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more. I like this color here. This sort of the color that pink color has been a good color to, right there. And then the last one, I'm going to show you one more sparkly one. Okay, the sparkles. These are all, I put them sort of all out in here. You can see you need a combination of colors and all. And uh, Pompano really like these these jigs. And think about it. You need to move around until you see a little bit of flashing in the water. And, and But this time of year, 
you know, the fish are biting. Uh, it looks like a good week of weather. And I, I would recommend if you like to surf fishing, it'll be a good time to uh, get into it. And you're going to find some of the spots are still a little bit muddy, but you, you move around until you find some pretty good spots there. And uh, I want to start seeing some good pompano pictures, okay? All right, let's take our, our next break, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Glad you started that morning off with me. I wanted to mention, I uh, was talking about the pier earlier. I know a lot of y'all remember when the pier was first uh, built, it was, the walk-on fee was 25 cents. Well, Carrie was just telling me a while ago, it's been $2 for a long time, but the uh, pier park, uh, as Panama City Beach Pier, has gone up to $3 for the walk-on. Uh, the commissioners voted four to one and uh, with the abstaining vote by Rick Russell, I think, on, but uh, he didn't want to. He didn't want to raise it to three dollars. But anyway, it went up three dollars. And I think the county pier is still two dollars. Haven't been there recently, but uh, a lot of y'all remember when it was twenty-five cents. So they're gonna get a lot more complaints now. Uh, one of the things I was gonna mention, uh, we had our coastal cleanup recently, and, and I want to show you one of the things. This lady mentioned this the other day. One of, that might sit right there. <laughs> okay. One of the things picked up most on the coast now, or believe it or not, are these bottle, these water bottle caps. Y'all see it right there. This water bottle cap right here. This is what people, for a while it had been, you know, I took my students there for years to Carl Gray Park and we spent most of our time picking up cigarette uh, uh, butts. And that was, and it's still mo most of the trash, uh, you know, percentage wise, not, not weight wise. Now percentage wise, you pick up more cigarette butts in a public place than you do anything else. But recently, a lady wrote about a paper uh, a Sunday, I thought it was interesting. She was out cleaning up her, in her neighborhood along the coastline and she picked up more bottle caps, and, and I was thinking, you know, they would the old pop tops, we used to have those pop tops that would just pop off and throw away, and now they haven't, they, they just thought about, let's keep them attached to the can. It would be nice if the technology would keep these bottle caps attached to the bottles, because a lot of people are going to drink a bottle of water, throw it, throw it down, and start drinking it, and uh, if it would just stay on there, I know it would stay on a little bit, but most people make it a little bit stronger, it would be a lot better. That's just my feelings on, on, on cleaning up trash and all. Now, we got to go scalloping this past weekend. I was so excited. I don't know. Yeah, I thought one time I would just be Gail and I going, but uh, two of the kids went with us, and Bill and Donna Allen called, and, and they weren't doing anything, so they, we all went together, and they uh, met us down there Saturday morning at the house, and we, we put it together a little trip. It was so nice. First day of fall was Saturday. Now, I want to tell you all, we're in a place here where we, I, I told you on the show Friday exactly where to go scalloping. Well, that's exactly where I went. And you're going to be, well, you're going to enjoy this. And I have a lot of underwater footage. And with one of the granddaughters, uh, uh, really got in the water. And she just got after it. She just loved doing it. But the key to it, because the reason she loved it, because we're in this deep of water. It's incredible. And every year I change my scalloping pattern. It seems like I think I haven't figured out. And then next year they're going to be somewhere else. So it's, it's fascinating to me to, uh, to study these. And this, we went out in, uh, we went out in, in style. I just had a, had a great time, had great weather. Not a lot of people on St. Joe Bay scallop, and there were a couple of boats that down behind us that were closer to the island, and I saw one or two more, and that's about all we saw. But what a wonderful day with good friends and family scalloping on the last trip of 2012. So, Jeff, let's roll this video. All right, good morning, folks. We're down at St. Joe Boat Ramp. Maddie, McKenzie, Donna Allen, Bill's up there in the truck. He's going to back us down. This is our final. It's the last weekend of scallop season. We're going, we may not get a lot, but we're going out and have a great day. We've got wind coming out of the north, northeast about 8. Donna, are you excited? Yes. <laughs> Girls, you all excited? Woo! Matt is real excited. She's reading a book. <laughs> okay. Stand down outdoors. Scallop in St. Joe Bay.
folks, we've wrapped up our final scalloping trip of the year 2012. And Bill, we've had a good trip. Real good trip. I, what, a lot of work. What was amazing, I don't know if you can see the size. These are huge scallops. Palm size. Palm, look at that. And Bill's got a big hand. Put it on my hand, my hand's small. Look how big those are. Huge scallops. And we got a whole five gallon bucket full right here. And then we got, we got another bag full. That's our last bag. Donna, which one of these was the last scallop? You remember? The last scallop. The last scallop. Oh, it was this one right here. That was the last scallop That's that we got. the last scallop of 2012, right there. That was it. Not any of them deeper than two and a half, three feet of water. Now, I don't know if you heard that. We were in, two, we were in this deep of water, folks. This deep of water. And uh, clear water. And they seem to have a pattern where they're sort of in line. Did y'all pick that up? Mm -hmm. We were talking about that earlier. And I, I can't think of a better way for the, the first day of fall is today. And a better way to start off the fall season and do, do what we did. That's a big one. Maybe that's the last one. Well, that's the last one? Yeah, maybe that's it. These are huge scallops. <laughs> you know, uh, we had a great time, Bill. But yeah, it's a great Good way time. to end the scallop season. I think it's the way we started it, wasn't it? Didn't we go out on the first yeah. weekend? Yeah, we did. We had a great time. Yeah. Girls, you have a good time? Mm -hmm. Maddie, you have a good time? <laughs> Kenzie, you have a good time? Yep. yep. Kenzie is the scallop queen. Scallop queen. There we go. Matt is the scallop. What's Matt? She's a bait oh. girl. All right. We wrapped up 2012 season. Hey, honey. That's a lovely headdress you have. This is what there. the queen, scallop queens wear on their head. Uh-huh. Just ask Mackenzie about That's it. why you don't see very many of them on TV. That's why I'm there. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for Panhandle on Tours with Winston Chester. Panhandle on Tours features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle on Tours.